And we live, baby. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Bandicoot Music. You know what I'm saying? Tapping in with you one more time. Before we get started, you know, I'll just have to let you guys know how to roll up this chopstick. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Dope Jola, because I watched that nigga tutorial. That shit work, head ass. Yeah, man, so long story short, man, I go by Bandicoot. You know, that's with a four and two zeros. You know, you exchange the A for the four. You exchange the O's for the zeros and shit like that. I'm trying to be creative and new. Pardon the sounds in the background. I got my window open. I'm a broke nigga right now, so I ain't got all the, you know, lights and whatever the fuck else you're supposed to have and shit. But basically, I just thought I'd start this channel just to chop up with the young folk, some of my peers, and motherfuckers who just be bored, especially during this quarantine time, so... I hope y'all uh, like what I got to say, you dig? All right, man, so... As you can tell by the title, I'm gonna tell you a story about basically how I got to where I'm at. Uh... At the age of 16, I caught a case in Nevada. Uh, to be more specific, Las Vegas, Nevada, Clark County. Uh, never been in trouble before. Um, was around the wrong group of people, shit like that, you know. Same old, same old story and shit. Ended up catching a case. You know, me, me, me being Billy Badass. <sighs> Nigga in that juvenile courtroom nigga just just feeling himself talking big big shit to them to they ass certified me now what certification is it's when they charge a juvenile as an adult so basically you facing um adult punishments and shit like that like but i'll get to more on that yeah so anyway so i'm 16 right i'm originally from the bay area I had moved to Las Vegas when I was like 13 going on 14. I'm not going to tell y'all the year because I'd be lying. I'd be I'm always off when it comes to that type of shit. But I was going, you know, moved to Vegas. You know, I went to Legacy High School in North Las Vegas, which is North Town from the people that know the area. Uh, basically went to a different school, you know, every, every fucking year. It seemed like I went to Legacy, Durango. Cimarron, Desert Rose, and the little homeschool shit, the AIS shit, you feel me? So, yeah, so long story short, I was able to be very sociable when it came to, like, that city. Like, going to different <laughs> schools, you go into different areas, different sides of towns, meeting different people, different crowds. So, at the time I'm 16, I'm going to Cimarron and shit. A group of my niggas and shit, and if them niggas is watching this, they probably know. The whole situation. Long story short, ended up catching a case for home invasion, right? Never been never been in trouble with the law before in my entire life. That well, I ain't gonna say like my entire life. I've never actually got caught and like went to jail or juvie or anything. So this is my first time, you know, in this whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with a whole situation like this. So long story short, you know, I go to juvenile, I have a co-defendant, he was he was uh, 18 at the time I was 16 so he went directly to CCDC which is the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas uh, so I went to the uh, little juvenile place I think like off Bonanza and like fucking I forget but it's over on the east side of Vegas and shit you feel me so boom I'm in juvenile for like a couple months and shit not even really know I'm up for certification you know what I'm saying? And uh, so I go to court and they got, mind you, I ain't even see my lawyer ever. The first time I met this nigga was the day I had sentencing, that type of shit. Fast forward, so I'm in the sentencing room, feeling myself, I'm 16, I'm thinking I'm finna get like six months in Elko, six months Spring Mountain, which is like juvenile uh, detention center. So I might even get put on juvenile probation because it's my first time. Boy, let me tell you, they had this whole motherfucking meeting about certification. I did not know what the fuck they were talking about. Long story short, nigga, the judge say, bink, nigga, all right, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna prove him for certification. Nigga, I'm thinking that shit sound good. Like, certification, nigga, I'm certified, nigga, you feel me? Nope. Nope. Nigga's like, I'm like, what that mean? They like, nigga, you going to the big boy house. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, nigga, you, nigga, top rhyming, nigga. Like, you feel me? Like, so I'm like, okay. But I'm not tripping, 
Because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm a kid at the time, I'm 16, so I'm thinking young mind. I'm like, shit, I'm going to be able to cuss. I can buy a uh, honey bun and shit, commissary, nigga. Fuck it. If I have to, nigga, I'm going to bail out on their ass. I can't bail out of you. I can bail out of county, though. You feel me? So, took it to the chin. Mom getting hectic, trying to blame pops. It's your fault. All that nigga let me do is smoke weed. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, she like, it's your fault this nigga like that. That nigga smoked a joint when he was 14. Like, whatever. You feel me? So, boom. So we get, I get back to little juvenile unit, sick, trying to be tough, but I'm sick as soon as that cell door closed. As soon as that cell door closed, nigga, I ain't gonna cap, nigga. I'm like, damn, bruh, I'm finna be around these big niggas. But I'm not even tripping, cause you know, when niggas on the block, niggas on the street, niggas around older niggas all the time, niggas 24, nigga 25. And even them old niggas that should have been gave it up, should have been retired, niggas in their 40s and 50s and shit. So. I really wasn't worried about, like, the people in it. I was just worried about, like, how much time I was facing. Because juvenile time and, like, big boy time is complete different things. You go from a few months to maximum a few years to, nigga, football numbers, nigga. Randy Moss on the sideline. So it's like, nigga. So I was sick. I don't even know how much time I'm facing because I was charged with two counts of home invasion with deadly weapon. Two counts of attempt robbery with deadly weapon. Two counts of conspiracy to commit robbery with deadly weapon and a racking tearing charge, you feel me? So then I'm like they told me what one of them charges was carrying. I was like, Jesus, nigga. So they put me in the juvenile cell when I get back to the juvenile unit after I've been sentenced. Now technically since I've been certified, which means technically I'm an adult in the system, I cannot be around these juvenile niggas. Even though these niggas might be older than me. So I'm in a cell, the weak ass niggas come up to my door like, nigga, wooty wop. Technically, I can't punch this bitch ass nigga in the mouth because I can get charged as an adult now because in the system, I'm an adult. Like, fuck my age. You know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping. Nigga, later on that day, they immediately came and got the young fella. Bink. I'm like, ah, nigga, first time I ever had to experience grown up booking. Head ass. So boom, I'm in booking. <coughs> And anybody who ever been locked up in Las Vegas uh, County knows how dirty this whole process is. First, you walk through this little Saudi port. It's like, it's like, I look at it like three different like phases in booking. You got the phase when you're in a little, when you're sitting down in the first part, you got all the prostitutes and all the bitches that be in the back line, being and then all the niggas and shit be in the middle, and you don't know who you sit next to. This nigga could be just here for being drunk on the strip, and the nigga next to you could be in here for stabbing 18 people in the neck with a motherfucking saw or something. So, you really gotta be on your P's and Q's in there. So, but mind you, I'm young, so niggas off the rip already like looking at me, like face free, like damn, this nigga kinda looking, you feel me? So, I sit down. Nigga, they gave my little paper with my charges on it and shit. How much, you know, the bail gonna be, all that shit. So, I get my little paper. I'm reading this shit, looking like I'm trying to read fucking Japanese or some shit. Confused as hell. So, motherfuckers, niggas like, damn, bro, like, what you in here for? Now, this some, this some gang for you niggas who got to go through this shit in the future, nigga. Nigga, don't get caught up and be all extra friendly and shit. Think of that, think of that Blanco, nigga, from motherfucking 27th Street. Nigga's cool as fuck because he was chopping it up with you during booking and shit. But that same nigga... You feel me? We'll switch on you the minute y'all step onto that tier. You feel me? So you gotta understand that. Keep your motherfucking business to yourself. I don't give a fuck if you gotta lie, nigga. What you in for? Murder. Damn, that nigga in here for murder. Nigga, leave that nigga alone. You feel me? So, but yeah, so niggas asking me, like, what you in here for? I'm like, shit, man. Just one of them. Just. And back in the day, they had this motherfucking show called Jail. Where, like, in Las Vegas, they, they had, like, cameras and shit in the county and shit. So, I know where these motherfuckers just pull up on you, nigga, like, what are you in here for? How do you feel about the uh, circumstances you're in? How do you feel about how the guards treat you? Just bullshit-ass questions. And I'm like, I'm young, man. I'm juvenile. I'm not even supposed to be able to talk to y'all without no consent. Just capping, not even knowing. You know what I'm saying? God didn't really want to be on TV and shit. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, but no cap. The first motherfucking, like, 15 minutes I was there, nigga, some Mexican and some old-ass white boy got in a fight right behind me. 
nigga. As soon as they start thumping, nigga, bing, 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 nigga, I'm looking behind me like, what the fuck? Nigga's like, man, keep your head straight, nigga, unless you want to be involved. Neck brace. But, so, after like about, I say about 45 minutes of just sitting down in this motherfucking chair, we go to the second part, second phase. They walk through this little hallway, you gotta take your little mugshot picture. You feel me, bing, do all that shit. And then they send you to this wider room where there's hella more chairs, but you got all the bitches on one side, you got all the niggas on the other side. And they got the phones in the front, then they have the people that got to check your, like, uh, vitals and shit who got to, like, like, check your tattoos, what they mean, got to ask you if you're gang affiliated. Uh, they got to ask you all these questions, you want to go to PC, all that weird ass shit. So, so you're sitting in there waiting for those people to call your name so you can get the so you can get your fucking process going on, you feel me? But at the time, but at the same time, the phone calls are free at this moment. So you got hella motherfuckers really trying to get their jug in before they go upstairs because that's when they're gonna start charging for them fucking phone calls. So you know me, I'm instantly uh, mother head ass mother. I'm in jail, nigga. She already knew though. You no, know, you know the love came out, man. We gonna make sure you straight. Uh, anything you need, he got you, gonna throw money on your books, all that shit, woo woo wop you know, Pop's just like, nigga, I'll come visit you, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I mean, so, I mean, nigga can't really complain, now it's kind of just, uh, maintaining now, you dig, like, I ain't worried about, if I'm a starving this motherfucker, now I'm just worried about just making sure I stay on my toes, so, I never step out of bounds and shit, cause the littlest thing in jail could really become the biggest altercation of your life, if you don't handle the situation right. So, so for all you tough niggas who really think you really with that rah-rah shit, and, and you know, young niggas who think y'all want to carry these guns and all that shit, I'm just telling you, man, eventually when you go to that place where you ain't got no gun, bro, your car's going to get pulled, and you really, really better be that nigga that you are with the gun without that gun. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. I get called up to the uh, vital lady or whatever the fuck they call. You feel me? They call my name. They run my little fingerprints. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, they ask me if I'm gang affiliated. Uh, I ain't had no tattoos at the time, but. Matter of fact, I ain't had no tattoos at the time when I caught the case. You feel me? So. I ain't got no tattoos. I got hella tattoos now. So. Long story short. Nigga, they check my little vital. Everything checked out. Now, I'm a juvenile, right? Now, even though I'm charged as an adult, technically I'm still a juvenile when it came to, like, certain things within the jail. Like, for example, like, I'm not supposed to be in a cell with anybody over 18. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be in a cell with only another juvenile. Uh, I'm not supposed to go to the holding tanks in booking. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to go directly up to the floor. You know what I'm saying? They fucked up, my nigga. Tell me why I was in a holding tank for almost, like, two days Thugging in the trenches with the nigga with the fucked up feet, bruh. I'm telling you, nigga, I was thugging in the trenches with the nigga with the fucked up feet. And y'all niggas who be in jail, no. Nigga with the fucked up feet. Let that nigga peel off. I know you like the polo socks. But let that nigga peel off his sock. And what you gonna see? You know how, you, you ever see like the movie Holes? You ever see like how they try to make like desert landscapes? How it literally looks like there's like chips of sand on the ground? You know what I mean? I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but you know how like in any movie you ever seen when they try to show the desert, how it seems like the ground is like cracking. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how these niggas feet be with a tin of green though. You feel me? So anyways, long as they fucked up, I was in booking, nigga. Which is which was like the holding, I'm in booking in the holding tank. Nigga, I was supposed to go directly up. So I'm in the holding tank with all these niggas, man, but the phone call's still free. I'm calling all the homies, nigga. Like, what's your number? You feel me? Hey, what's that one bitch number? Hey, what's, uh, what do you want number? You feel me? Every bitch I ever cheated on, what's that, what's that, what's their number? All, like, and I'm, I need every number possible. Because I'm not finna do this time alone, you dig? So, I'm in a holding tank. They finally come get the group. And, um, yeah, man, like, it, it, was, it was a crazy situation. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, that's just a little part one of this whole little story. You know, just the, uh, the situation at hand and my experience in booking. I'll tell you what it was like when I first hit the tier, though, on the next video. You know what I'm saying? My name is Bandicoot Music. I hope y'all enjoy uh, my channel. This is just some new shit. Regular nigga. Not trying to do regular shit. That's it, man. Please subscribe. You know, uh, drop a comment below. You know. Fuck with your boy.
Till then, you dig?